Hi everyone, welcome back to AfroMD. I know it's been a while, but I wanted to come through and post a video that was inspired by an Instagram user, Don Henny. I'll also link his YouTube information down below, but he just basically wanted to do a video on basically my experience at NYU and some of the factors that went into going in here. So without further ado, I'll just read some of the questions that he sent me. So the first is uh, introducing myself. Uh, hi, I'm Touche Falloway. Um, I am a student at NYU Grossman School of Medicine and I am currently in my third year of medical school. So I went to undergrad at the University of Pennsylvania from 2013 to 2017. And then I also did a master of public health in global health. So I graduated with that in 2018 prior to coming to medical school. So the second question, why did you pick your school to attend? What factors ultimately made you decide on this particular school? So when I was thinking about med schools, it was really important for me to have a school with a strong research background, a school that served a diverse po patient population, and also a school in a big city. So NYU kind of fit all those factors for me, so that's what made me really uh, look forward to attending NYU. Three. Tell us about your academic structure, um, i.e. an overview of the curriculum, classes taken in what order, if there's grades and pass-fail, um, and then like the breakdown of uh, the clinical years and stuff. So at NYU, we are a 1.5 year preclinical program, and then we have one year of clinical rotations, and then after that you take step one and step two, and then your sub-internships. So in the preclinical years, you take a series of modules, and those modules are all pass-fail. So from the beginning, you start with um, a block that's called DNA organelles and cells, and then you take infectious and in infections and immunity, uh, which is basically like a giant infectious diseases block. And then from there you do anatomy. And then after you've done kind of the, uh, a lot of the, that basic science groundwork, you go on and you do the organ system. So the organ systems in order, if I remember them correctly, uh, you start with cardiology, then you do pulmonology, then the renal system, then you do uh, GI, then you do endo repro and yeah, endocrinology and reproductive sciences. Uh, and then you are off for the summer and then you come back and then you do anatomy again. Um, so anatomy in your first year is, is, is the truncal anatomy. And then in the beginning of your second year, you do the extremities and then head and neck. And then after you finish anatomy, you do neurological sciences. So it's basically neuro. And then after neuro, you do the musculoskeletal system, dermatology, and then rheumatology. So then after that, you finish your preclinical years. So then if you're an MD-PhD student, and this is the time that you go off to your studies, uh, you take step one first and then you become a graduate student. If you're just like a regular three-year or four-year student, this is when you start uh, doing clerkship year. So clerkship year is a required year you have to go through that has all the major uh, disciplines. So you have pediatrics, psychology, internal medicine, um, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, and neurology, as well as some electives you have to take from there. And then after that year is over, you then Oh, sorry, and that year is graded. It's not pass-fail. You have a uh, grade spanning from honors, high pass, pass, and then fail. So after that year is over, you then take step one um, and then step two, and then you do your step internships, and from there on you have other requirements you have to finish. But that is basically like a very general overview of what the curriculum like is at NYU. So number four, what are the pros of your school? I think NYU has a lot of resources, so if you're per passionate about any particular thing, it's very easy for you to find the resources to be able to do such things, which is great. Um, I think it's also located in a big city, so you can explore a bunch. Hopefully COVID will be over soon, but um, I think especially like my first and second years, I thought what was great was that I got to see New York City, I got to do a lot of different things. like. I ran a couple half marathons, like I got to eat, like I went to so many concerts. Um, I saw so, so many artists here in New York and I think it's a great, great strength of um, going to school in a big city. 
Uh, so question five, any unique traits or aspects or things your school is known for? Um, free tuition probably is what we're known best for, but I think another thing that's actually really cool is the three-year program. If you choose to do residency here, you can finish medical school in three years, and, and there's a variety of different specialties. You could do internal medicine, pediatrics, uh, ear, nose, and throat, um, ophthalmology, orthopedic surgery, dermatology, interventional radiology, like there are really a broad a variety of specialties that you could go into as like a three-year student if you choose to do residency here. And I think it's actually really, really cool and I think an advantage for people and I feel like it's something that's being more utilized now than um, in the past. So it's definitely an option to consider it if you, especially if you know what you're going to do. Um, and you don't even have to know what you're going to do before coming to med school. There's plenty of people even who opted into the three-year program in their second year. So there's plenty of time. So six, what is life like outside of school? What's the housing situation, affordability of housing and things to do in the city? So um, the nice thing is uh, we all are guaranteed housing in Vilcek Hall, which is literally like across the street from the hospital. So it's super, super convenient and it's pretty affordable as well. Um, in terms of uh, things to do in the city, I mean, New York City, you can, you literally can do anything. Um, uh, hopefully more so as things are, as the pandemic is hopefully like coming to a close and things open up more, there's, it's New York City, you can literally do whatever you want. Question seven, what does the school offer in terms of extracurriculars or unique extracurriculars, support groups, involvement in the community? So NYU has uh, the free clinic, the student run clinic that um, takes care of needs in the community and it's really it's a really great opportunity to give back and get involved in helping to take care of uh, patients. In terms of extracurriculars, literally anything you can think of. There's a running group, there's there's a food and wine society, there's a knitting society. There's so many different extracurriculars that you can do here and if there's something that you don't see that you want to start, you can start it yourself. Question eight. How about things to do to relax away from school, whether whether activities in the city or programs put on by the school? So typically after every two weeks or so, um, student council, the different class councils on student council for each class will put on what's called a post exam. So for example, people have gone ice skating, people have like gone to eat uh, dinner in the park. Um, I think with COVID right now, things have been a little Things have looked a little different, but there are definitely still different opportunities for people to relax. Um, again, being in New York City, there's so, so much to do outside of school. So it's great if you have like any activities or things that you yourself are passionate about, there is time to do that, especially within the first like year and a half of, of school. Question nine, how does the school support its students? So there are a lot of funding opportunities for people to do different things. So for example, like if you by chance get the opportunity to present in an academic conference, the school can reimburse you for doing that. Um, also through your school fees, a student council puts on a lot of different activities for students. Um, so that's a great way to get involved. There are also mental health services here. So if you need to tap into those, uh, that's uh, an option that's available as well. Question 10, what do you wish you knew but you only recognize in hindsight about your school. If you could do it all over again, would you make the same decision? Hmm. This is a great question. Just as a whole, medical schools in general have a long way to go um, in terms of specifically promoting, um, supporting, and ensuring diversity, equity, and inclusion in medical education, within student body populations. Um, I think there is just a lot of work to be done and I think my passions and specifically like what I've learned in medical school makes me very excited to continue to further those efforts as, you know, a future like public health position, both inside of academic medicine and maybe like outside of that sphere as well. But I think there is just a lot of work that needs to be done and I think I didn't really quite have a sense of that until like coming to medical school. Um, any advice, shameless plugs? Um, I think 
medical school and like the journey to becoming a physician and even getting to medical school is very long and arduous and I think that you know it's very important to continue to reflect on what your individual goals are like why you came to medical school and what specific changes that you want to see made in the field of medicine that way you know when things get hard for you it's easy for you to it's easier excuse me for you to propel yourself forward and identify why you came to medical school even when things get hard um so i hope that was helpful thank you again so much don henny for um sending me these questions and i hope this video was helpful for you all i hope you have a wonderful day see you next time bye